Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for having me today. What a week for this market. Hasn't it been an exciting time to trade? <laughs> if, if you're an active trader and you know what to do, you're having an amazing two-week period here. Uh, if you're a long-term investor, you might be getting a little jittery. Uh, and if you are a, an active trader and don't know what you're doing, you're probably getting killed in this market. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is trading on the side of institutional money. And that is what I look for. And <laughs> before I get started here today, if you have any questions, you can always email me at melissatthestockswoosh.com. And as a moderator said, this is being recorded. You know, in these market periods, okay, which we're in this period here of volatility, it's very, very important to know what to do. So my specific strategy, what I'm looking for every morning that I take a trade, whether it's an option trade, whether it's a day in trade, and I do both, is I'm looking to see where the momentum is going to come into a stock based on if institutions are buying or selling the stock, or in some cases, shorting. Now, when I, when I say institutional money, what do I mean by that? I mean hedge funds, big, big banks, uh, you know, uh, big traders, big positions that you would see in the market, okay? And I think I can see everyone's chats. Um, actually, I'm not sure if I can see everyone's chats. Uh, I think I can if, if anybody types. I think I can see them. Anyways, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as we go along here today. So... If you have any questions, you can email me at melissatthestockswoosh.com or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, and you can also watch me on Fox News and Fox Business Network. If you uh, want to hear my take on the market, sometimes I talk about other topics, but very often I'm on about the market. I'll be on Monday morning, uh, very early in the morning, and Fox and Friends first on Monday morning if you happen to be up watching. So let's talk about what to do in the market. When I get up, and I decide what to do. I decide what I'm trading in the pre-market. Sometimes I decide in the post-market. I use a system. My system is called the golden gap, and that's what keeps me consistent. And again, getting back to the volatility, getting back to the last two weeks, getting back to the times that we're in, like even today, okay? Market's hanging on today by a thread. It's trying, it's trying to rally. It's not doing a very good job of it. But the reality is that you have to follow a system no matter what. And the system has to be consistent all across the number of trading days of the year in any period of time. Like the first five months of the year, the market was very bullish. It was very easy for people to trade. In fact, if you went long pretty much any strong stock overnight, you made money from January up until pretty much the end of April and into, into a period of May. But now it's getting a little bit trickier. Okay, it's getting a little bit trickier. You need to know what to do. And so this is where having a system is very, very important. Because if you change your mind what you're doing willy nilly every day, you'll never have what I call conviction. And what is conviction? Conviction is you believe you and I call it I believe 100%. Now nothing's 100% in the market. Absolutely no system is 100%. No one takes like 10 trades and wins in 10 trades all the time every single day every single week. The idea of making money as a trader, and again, it doesn't matter if you're a short-term trader or a long-term trader, is that you make money consistently more times than you lose. So you have more winners than you have losers, okay? That is how you have to look at it. And the only way to do that is to stay consistent and to stick on what you're doing. And again, in this type of environment, having a system to follow that's a high win ratio is important because when... When the president tweets or when news comes out of something that happens in China, I mean, there's so many different things that can, can create a change in your own personal conviction that if you don't have the conviction in a strategy that you do, that you know, that you believe in, you believe in the strategy, okay, the strategy you believe in 100%, then you're going to change your mind every day. Like in this market, even in the last couple of days, people are going long, people are shorting, people are killing longs, then they're going short, then they're selling, then they're buying, then, the, you know, they don't know what to do. And today is a good day because yesterday there was so much volatility that people now don't even really aren't sure what to do today. Should we go long in this market? Should we short? Things are down. I even heard people talking on TV yesterday that people were buying, buying the market when it was falling off a cliff yesterday which is absolutely ridiculous. But the point is, when I look for a move or an entry in something or a stock pick, okay, or an entry, a correct entry in the market, I'm looking for to see where institutions are buying to go long or where institutions are selling or shorting to go short, 
okay? And I can tell you right now, no institutions were coming and buying this market yesterday. So it was dumb for people to be buying it. And actually, I think it's pretty dumb for people to be buying the market today. Even if we go green today, even if we close at the high, I think it is not a good decision to buy this market today. And no institution is buying this market today. And I can tell how, based on my method of my system, reading the pre-market in something called the gap, which we're going to talk about. But before I show you an example of a gap, I want to say one more thing. I've been trading for 12 years and I've had the business for seven. And the one thing I find that people fail to do um, is to book money consistently. And so people will, will get in trades and they will lose and then they will make money and then they will think they know what to do. But overall, every week, every month, every year, they're not booking money consistently. In order to be successful, you do have to book profits. That means get out when you're up. And that means if you're taking you know, again, umpteen trades in a month's time and you're not booking money, then whatever you're doing, whatever strategy, whatever system you have doesn't work. You can blame yourself on poor money management and that's true. Some people have terrible money management. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit today as well. But the reality is if you had a good system, you'd make money even with poor money management most of the time, unless you never got out when you were up. And, and there are people that don't get out when they're up. There, unfortunately, there are people that always have high expectations that I find those people are usually people that lose a lot, okay, take bad trades, and then want some huge big winner to make all the money back from all the losers they ever had since the beginning of time. And that's not realistic. Consistency, that's realistic. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's a consistency, and part of that comes from the strictness in the system. Your mind will get into a habit of looking at charts correctly if you start to read them right. And also then you will also have in that in your mind, you will, you will start to envision and think about prosperity and bringing money to you and attracting money to you so that when you're up, you take it out effortlessly and you're not greedy. Okay, some people act very greedy in the market and you say, well, how could they be greedy if they're, if they're losing? Trust me, people act greedy when they're losing. People act greedy when they don't have a lot of money. Someone can be greedy and not have a lot of money. Not just rich people are greedy. But that's a misnomer as well, okay? So train your mind to think that you're attracting money to you, that you're doing the right actions. It's not about being greedy, okay? You're not going to suck every dollar out of every trade. You're never going to get out of a short of the low. You're never going to go out get out of the long at the high. That's not your job as a trader. Your job as a trader is one job, to get in and out with profit to get in and out with profit and to follow your system consistently, whatever it is, but you gotta have a system that works, okay? And if you're in a rut, this market is gonna, this market is gonna turn you upside down silly and get you out of that rut, which means this is an opportunity for you with the volatility that we have, which is not gonna go away. This volatility is not going away anytime soon, I can tell you that right now, okay? People think it's going to, it's not. But either way, this is an opportunity for you as a trader to do something, to take action, to learn something new, a new system like mine, for example, if you want to come and do my class or change something you're doing right now. You have to take this and look at this as an opportunity. Don't fall off a cliff and get in worse if you're having a bad year because of this volatility, but making more mistakes. Let this shake you up. But that shaking you up, this volatility that's shaking people up can be a good thing. It can push you forward into the next level that you can become a better trader. And obviously then that helps you to make money. Okay, any questions so far? Let me just see here. I don't know if I have the right question box up, but hopefully I do. Anyways, if you're here, we're gonna talk about institutional money, okay? And you have to make money on a regular basis if you wanna do this as a career. And even if you don't wanna do this as a career, you have to make money on a regular basis or you can't keep going. Okay, so many people blow up their accounts. That's not ideal, okay? When you're starting out, when you're new, it's very, very important to learn what to do. So I'm looking to capture the moves that institutional money is making on a daily basis on a small time frame, period. And then for options on a large time frame, period, okay? Because again, you can use it for both, options or day trades. But know that institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not there, it is. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. And we've had a lot of momentum in the market actually the last two weeks. When you're looking for the institutional money, you're really reading the side of power. Who's in control? The bulls or the bears on any given particular day or week. 
You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And if you don't know how to read this, you're going to get hurt because you could see a certain day where something happens, where maybe something rallies and you think that it's going higher. You think that it's long and guess what? It's not. It falls. It drops and breaks the next day or follows through even then later in the day. And then all of a sudden you take a trade, you're up, and then all of a sudden you lose. Lose the profit and lose the money that you risk because you read the chart completely wrong, okay? Any questions here so far? So becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. How do I do this? I use advanced technical analysis, okay? And what does this mean? It means reading price action in charts. So comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. And again, it's very important to make money. Don't go year over year over year over year losing, okay? Elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading the market because they are in control. They are in control. And even if you don't know how to read it, I'm telling you it's possible to read it these big position players move the market and you have to trade with it. If you do, you will make money effortlessly. If you are against it, it will be hard and choppy for you to make money or you could do what I call scalp or you do things against what's happening in the trend, for example. But you know that's a nightmare. And I would never take a large size position. I'm talking about several thousand shares and anything against what's happening in the side of power, okay? And again, you have to look for it. You have to spot it. And it's not flipping every other day. So you can't say, well, the bulls are in charge today. Nope, the bears are in charge tomorrow. Nope, the bulls are in charge today. Nope, the bears are in charge tomorrow. It's not like that. That's what I call zero conviction. It doesn't mean that something stays in the same trend forever, or that the control stays in the same trend forever, but it does until it doesn't, if you understand what I mean but you can win big trading on with this side of power. So I have one focus, one strategy that I trade, one thing that I do, I read gaps. Now, we're gonna go over what a gap is here and I look at it in the pre-market, but you can look at it in the post-market. So I term to my system the golden gap because it's like finding gold in the market. When I find a gap that is being in charge with institutional money, again, whether it's buying or selling. So what is a gap? This is a very basic definition for those of you that don't know. <laughs> and again, if anyone has any questions, I don't know if I can see the questions because I don't see any yet. If I, if there are questions there and I don't see them, uh, if the, if the organizer can let me know. So what is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? So what is a gap? Here's the market. This was the spy from the previous day. So what happened here? This was the market, so what is today? Thursday, so this was Wednesday, this was Tuesday. So Tuesday, market rallied, closed here, boom, gap down, okay? So this was Tuesday night at four o'clock. So from four o'clock on Tuesday night, which was the close and the close of the market, until 9.30 when we opened, the market gap down. So up here, we were around 292 and change where we closed in the SPY. This is the ETF for the S&P. And then boom, we opened here in the morning around 288 and change. So this was a gap down. So you see here that we closed here gap down. So this was Tuesday, Wednesday, and then today. Okay, we fell here, this was yesterday. We fell into ourselves on yesterday. So this is a gap. The market gaps a lot. Market gaps quite a few days. Market gaps almost every day, okay, to be honest with you. This is looking back last week, the market closed here gapped up. This is a gap up. Closed to four o'clock in the morning at 9.30, opened higher, okay? So, Golden gaps have a huge opportunity because they spot the power of money. Now, does that mean that every gap is playable? No, no, it does not. In fact, there are more gaps that are not playable in any chart, including the market, than are playable. So I'm only really looking for usually one trade per day. Now, some days, particularly trend days, which we saw yesterday in the market, and we also saw like two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, a lot of things will work and go with the market, okay? But on any given day, most of the days, I'm only looking for one thing. I can't see any comments or questions, no. Uh, not one. I don't know where to go. I see chat, then I see attendees. I'm not sure where to, where to see the questions. If you, wanna, if you wanna let me know. 
Um, oh, now I see it. Now you see them? I see just, I just see one. Walmart had uh, a big gap up. Oh, here, I have to scroll up. They're really squishy. Do you know how to make them fatter? Hold on. Uh, you can actually detach the tab and okay. drag it to, if you have another screen up, you can detach it and put it on that screen and okay. just spread it out. Oh, there I see it. Okay. Oh, somebody said I'm fantastic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Win ratio is important. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. As someone asking about the market right now, looks like somebody's asking about the market right now. Yes, I'm talking very fast. I typically do talk fast. Uh, Walmart had a gap up. Yeah, well, anyways, long and short, um, I'll just briefly, I don't want to get too off track here. I, I, I don't want to get too off track here about the discussion today in general. I'm talking about institutional money. And for those of you that are upset about me pointing out things that are obvious, guess what? It's good to be, have them pointed out. You may know that having a high weighing ratio is important, but not everybody does. And we have a lot of people here. Some are beginners, some are advanced. So you know what, and it's good to be reminded of those things even if you've been trading for 20 years or longer than I'm alive. It's still good to be reminded of these, those things, okay? And chances are, if you're here today, you're here because you want to learn something or you want to improve or you want to get better. Uh, so as far as the market right here now, there's no institutional money that's coming and buying the market. So Tuesday, that was the day that we gapped down and rallied and had that big rally on the tweet that the tariffs are gonna be put off for some of the retail things until December 15th. That was what I call a false rally, okay? I would not have gone along that rally. We've 100% retraced that rally since then. Uh, if I ran a hedge fund, which I don't right now, but someday I might, I would never have gone along that day. I would never have bought the market that day. You have to look at the chart. And again, we'll see where we end up with time. I wanna finish my lecture here, but the reality is that the market is not that far off the highs. And why would you buy and put new money in here if you ran a fund? I mean a big fund, okay? You would not do that. Okay, so you have to look for what the smart money is doing. And the reality is there's too many unknowns that are happening right now. We, I, look at technical analysis. You as a trader can look at fundamentals if you want. But usually what's happening in the price action is telling you what's happening already built in from the fundamentals. And it's very, very challenging to try to predict what's going to happen. I mean, can anyone predict when Trump's going to tweet? No, no, you can't. So all that you have is to read the price action. But the long story short is that there's no new money coming back going along this market in here. So what do you have happening? Either you have selling, selling going on right here in the market, or you don't, well, you don't do anything, okay? So there's no institutional money that's buying this market right here now at this point. At this point, right here now today, whatever today is Thursday, the 15th of August. Now I could say something different in a week. But the reality is right now, no. Now you've seen some selling. In fact, you've seen selling ever since the Fed came out that were lowering rates, you've seen selling in the market. So again, if you were along the market, if you had positions in the market, if you ran a fund in the market, you might have gotten out of some in the last two weeks. And you can see that that is what has occurred, okay? That is what has occurred. You understand? Uh, let me just quickly see if I missed anything else or was important. I don't know anything about what you're talking about, about other people's stuff. I don't follow anyone else. I do my own thing. All right, let's get back to what we're talking about here about power and money. So how do you find golden gaps? You get up in the morning, you look for gaps, and I rate them. I rate them using a checklist. So I qualify them. And lately I've been looking at the market, okay? Because it has been very volatile and it is important, all right? And sometimes if I'm in a short, like for example, like yesterday, you can get a bigger move in something if you've got the market with you, power trending. Now power trends are rare in the market, but we've had some of them recently to the downside. And earlier in the year, we had some of them recently to the upside. But this checklist tells me what to look for in the price of a stock, okay? It tells me to that this is good, that it's a high odds. When you're trading, getting back to again what we were talking about earlier about having a high win ratio, this is not about 100%. It's about putting the odds in your favor. You're looking for something that has a high odds, high odds versus low odds. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you go and take trades that have high odds, and you do not take trades that have low odds, low odds of working. Okay, you don't want to waste your money or waste your bullets. And also, by the way, I put stops in. Now, in reference to options, there is no stock, really. The stock is whatever it happens to be, 
okay? Whatever you risk. If you risk $500, you risk $500. If you risk 1,000, that's it. If you wanna kill the trade when it's down 50%, that's on you, but I don't tell people to do it. And I've never traded on TUS, so I, and I'm not here to advertise for any specific broker. I'm not a broker, just so you know. You can trade wherever you want if you wanna come and learn from me. I don't sell any indicators, I don't sell any platforms, and I'm not a broker. You would come and pay me for the education if you want to learn my system or to get my trains for the options newsletter, okay? And I have a live trading room, but the only way to join that is if you do my class, just so you know. But as far as opening up accounts anywhere, I would talk to brokers specifically for whatever indicators you wanna put on your charts. I use very few. Um, anyways, getting back to what I was saying here, there is only one thing and one thing only can move the direction of a stock, which is money. And not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction and trends are set and moved by the power money people. And again, this makes it possible for you as an individual trader to make money. Otherwise, you'd never be able to trade many of these stocks that we look at. And again, we're looking at stocks that you know the companies, you know Apple, you know Facebook, you know you're familiar with them. They're not no-namers. And I don't trade any low float stocks or anything that's too dirt cheap or doesn't have any volume, okay? That's not being traded by institutions, okay? So we're looking for real companies, real stocks that have volume and momentum and move. Okay, so gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Okay, so that is what I'm looking for in either way. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you denote what to do and when a change is occurring. This is how you know when the power money will flow to pay you. So again, I use a checklist. This is what you'd come and learn from me. You'd learn it in the whole weekend. It's a 16 hour course. It's a 26 point checklist. I have used this for the last 12 years. I do not deviate from this. I don't do anything that I don't rate. I don't change my mind. If it doesn't meet the criteria, I don't trade anything that day. I'm very, very strict with what I do. Again, going back to the consistency, having a system means that you follow that system. You don't make it up as you go along and change your mind. You follow it and you stick to it and you believe in it or you don't do it at all because you have to believe in what you're doing if you're risking money in the market. If you don't believe in the trade, why are you taking it? I'm only surprised how many people take trades willy-nilly and come to trials and trading room trials. And I offer a trading room trial. If you wanna come email me, but people are supposed to be there to watch People go, will go and jump from trial to trial to room to room to room and take trades having absolutely no idea what the person is looking at or why they're doing it at all. So they have zero conviction and yet they will risk their own hard earned money. It is very important when you're trading to know why you were shorting a stop or why you were going long it. Okay. And whether you do a call or a put, you know, either way, it's the idea of going long or going short. Okay. That's how you can take size, and size is how you can make more money, okay? Because if you take 5,000 shares of something, you short it and it drops a dollar, guess what? That's $5,000. And how can you put size on? Well, you have to know what you're doing. You have to understand it. You have to comprehend it, and then it becomes just part of you. Like, I can see things now and just know. Just know. Very often, when I get up in the morning, I see where the market is gapping, what's going to happen on the day. Way before, way before. Like, I can get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and see where the market's going to do in the day. And that is a skill. It's a skill that I've developed over time for the last 12 years, okay? But the key to profits, real serious profits in the market is power money. So think about it, do things that make sense. A lot of what I teach people actually is common sense because I'm reading the power, I'm reading the price action. This is an old chart of CMG, but I think it's a nice chart because it really shows how this stock collapsed. Okay, this was, I'm going back here all the way, 2013 stock rallied, made new highs, 2014, 2015, ran all the way up. Again, this is CMG, this is 2015, look at where the stock was, amazing. Okay, then it got down, then it fell, then it fell off a cliff, then it rallied. This is 2016, drop, drop, dropped. Couple of gap downs in here, tried to rally here. This red line is a 200 period moving average and then gap down here and fell off a cliff. So again, I smush this here to make them small because I want to show you this is selling. 
this is selling. Now, this is back, like I said, a couple of years ago, but I really want to show you how this collapsed a beautiful selling, selling move. So if you had shorted, okay, then you would have made money. All right. Now, Netflix, this is going back again, 2016. 2016, Netflix was basing, 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 had a beautiful gap up. And then again, this was 2017, rallied, gapped up here again, 2017, gapped up here again, summer, spring of 2017, rallied, July 2017, look. So this is a really nice bullish move in Netflix, okay? So this is what buying looks like, see it? Anyways, once you understand what to look for, it's easy to press the button. If you don't know what to look for, it's hard to press the button. And this is where a conviction comes into play. But if you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with a crowd of day traders. And there were a lot of day traders that went along the market, like I said, two days ago. Now, if you did that as a day trade and got out, sure. But if you did it as an option or if you did it as a swing trade, you got killed. You got killed and you were down immediately into the next day, into the morning, which was yesterday. And God only knows what people are doing today, okay? Or how we act. I mean, I'll have to look at this. I'm probably gonna wait to look at the market now till four. But the reality is that most people that day trade lose. Most people that day trade lose. And the fact is that, you know, it's, it's just one of these things where you have to understand what you're doing when you're trading. Now, let's go over the trades from yesterday. This, there were two shorts. Uh, this is KSS. This gap down. This is a one-minute chart. Stock closed here. Gap down. Open dropped. So this was 814. This is a one-minute chart. So you can see it. So here's the drop, KSS pushed back, boom. Shorted it, got the drop. Now this had a little bit more to go, but as far as day trades go, I tried to focus on the morning. I'm looking to get a move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, 9.30 and 10. So this is it, this is called the money move. So you see here how easy it was to make money. All you had to do was to take the short and you got the drop. You were up as soon as you took it, you were never down. You take it, you get out, you get in, you get out. And that's it. Okay, so you really must have an edge. And one of my edges is reading the open, reading into the open, reading the first five minutes of the day and what's happening in a gap. And again, this, is, this, was, this was a spectacular read that I've had in the market. In fact, I was on a merit trade on this day and I said the market was still lower. Then we rallied, people went long, then we fell, fell, fell. Then we had this from the Trump tweet. Then we fell in here, this was yesterday. So I mean, you know, Again, I held the conviction with what I said, even on the day that the market was green. And that is what it's about. It's about, that's where you don't get tripped up. And this is why, again, people are getting killed in this market because they don't know what to do. But you have to look for opportunity. You act when you see the opportunity. And when you don't see the opportunity, then you don't act. The only time that you can make money is when the opportunity is there. So yesterday was a huge day with lots and lots and lots of volatility and lots of opportunity if you knew what to shore and if you had the right setup. So this again was a daily chart in KSS yesterday. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed here, this was the night before, gap down here, again, this was yesterday, into the open, fell, okay? Now here was the trade, again, I'm gonna go over it again. Short it, get the drop, or you could have held it down a little bit more. So the entry in this, this was the KSS short yesterday, 46.59 on 2,000 shares, which is an advanced risk, you could have taken less, Exit 45.65, take it and get out. Boom, drop right into the morning. So this was $1,880 in just several minutes of trading. Again, I'm usually looking to get in and out between 9.30 and 10, not for the options, but for the day trades. So I'm gonna go back and show you this here again. You take it, get out, take it, get out. Some people are asking about the market. I will look at the market if I have time, Okay, if I have time when we're done today, I really wasn't talking specifically about the market today, but I will look at the market if the moderator doesn't cut me off if I have time when I'm done with the lecture, okay? I see some people asking about the market. I, I don't remember if I have a half an hour today, 45 minutes, or how long I have. Um, if, the, if the moderator can just let me know. I see it's, I've been talking for about 30 minutes here. Um, M was the other one that we did yesterday. Closed here, gap down, open dropped. Again, this was Macy's. This was a gap down in the market yesterday. Okay, Macy's is a retail. So we shorted it, here's the drop. Boom, boom. Again, this is all you need. That you can live on this every day. But you gotta know what stock to watch, 
You gotta know what direction to take it and you have to know how to play it. You have to know where the entry is. You have to know where the target is and the exit and get out. Okay, and if you plop on size, it's very, very nice. So entry 1615, Macy's. This was yesterday, it was a short. Size 4,000 shares, exit 1589, boom, out. This was a really, really good exit on that. Really nice exit on this yesterday, actually. Profit 1,040 in Macy's. So two quick trades we did yesterday for the day trades. There was a bunch of options trades. I didn't have time to put these in the lecture here to yesterday. But the reality is most of the days, Monday through Friday, we're doing the quick day trades in and out, okay? So you have to go and look to see where the move is if you're an active trader. I don't trade all day for day trades. I think it's ridiculous and your eyes get tired and you make poor decisions. So I'm looking to get up in the morning and make money every morning the first hour of the day and be done. Now, I also call options trades. I don't call options trades every day. However, some days I might call five that I might not call any for two or three more days. You never know, okay? That again are longer term trades which may play out in the day or may play out in two to three days, okay? But again, in this volatility in this market, I think it's important to guess what? Take profits. Take profits. I called Tesla, this was a nice testimonial. Um, a lot of the people that are trading with me think that I have a crystal ball. I really don't. I really don't. I do have a, 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 a skill set, and that is what you can develop for yourself. I don't know how long it will take you to develop it. My class is two days. It's 16 hours. The next class is October 24th and 25th. You can learn everything in that weekend. I teach it all to you in the weekend. How long will it take you till it just becomes part of you? I don't know. I do know, though, that it has nothing to do with your level of experience because no one knows my system but me. So even if you've traded for 45 years, you're going to come and learn what I know, which is different. What I do is very unique. It's one of the reasons I talk on TV, and it's one of the reasons I've consistently called this market so well, where a lot of people are saying buy the dip and this and that and all kinds of other stuff. And again, I've been saying things, some things very different when I have to talk about the tariff situation that a lot of people have been saying as well, and I'm certain that I'll be right about that too. You have to focus on information. You cannot be sucked into doing things that seem like they're gonna work, but don't. And again, if they did work, you'd be profitable. You wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't be spending your time here today. You're here today because you wanna learn something because you wanna make more money. That's why you're here. And that's why you're gonna spend all day here listening to many, many different people, okay? So the key is that you have to make money. And how do you do that? The consistency and having a good system. But I think that the key is to focusing on the institutional money. And that is what it is. So again, if you want to trade per living, you need number one, a high winning strategy, good money management, and a good mentor to follow. This helps. Even if you don't understand anything that I talk about in the day trading room in the morning, if you take the trades and follow me, you can do well. So, you know, I call it KSS and I call the trades live in the room, the entries to stop, the exit, I call them live in the room, you can take them with me. Even if you don't know everything I do, you can follow me and you can do well. So time of the day is key for me, for the day trading, it's in the morning. If you wanna trade for a living, whether it's doing options or day trades, that is 100% up to you. So I teach a class once a month, it's called The Golden Gap. It teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. In the case of yesterday, we could have done any number one of things. It's rare that I do two things, but I did wanna do two things yesterday because I, I knew they would drop. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So I'm teaching how to read power and I'm teaching support and resistance. And even though everyone knows what that is, guess what? A lot of people don't know how to read it right. A lot of people read it wrong. One of the reasons the market's been so choppy is that as well, okay? So you could put 100 people in a room and everybody would say different supporting resistance levels and numbers and read it differently. It's true. Okay, so I teach people how to get conviction in their trading and not only that, how to make money. And that is important. It's fun to trade, it's fun to press the buttons. I love reading charts, but I love making money more than anything else. And I think it's one of the reasons that people are doing so well with me this year. I'm very, very, very focused on making money. I'm, I'm uh, very motivated to make a lot of money. And so I'm a good person to follow and listen to, because that's obviously what you wanna do. A lot of people attempt to trade for years and years and years and they're never successful. 
having someone like me direct them is very important because I'm highly motivated. And it doesn't mean I never make a mistake. Sometimes I do, but not that often. And this year, I've read this market spectacularly. And if you don't believe me, you can go listen to every YouTube video I have online, every single one on every channel that I've been on talking on TV. Be careful in this market. The volatility is not going to stop. And even though everybody thinks there's going to be a talk and a trade deal and all this and that in the next two to three weeks, I wouldn't bet your life on it. I would wait and see what happens. I wouldn't bet your life on that whatsoever at all. And this is a period right now. We're getting into the end of the summer. We're getting into the end of earnings season to take it easy and make sure that you do good stuff, that you take quality trades. I think you should do that every day. But a lot of people are in a desperate situation because they've been getting chopped up. And you can get out some warnings in the next, again, two weeks before Labor Day. And there may be days when there isn't any good trades. Well, you don't want to lose. And guess what? You don't do anything. Shut it down and walk away and go to the park. Okay? But trading is about chunking it out. 200, 300, 400, 500. And again, you must take profits when you're up. I think it's important to have conviction. And I also think it's important to empower yourself as an individual to be independent financially, whether you want to do this for a living, whether you want to do this part time, having control of your own money and your own finances, your own choices is very, very empowering. Okay. So I teach the class so people can learn it. And I'm trying to teach people conviction so they can understand that as well. Now, let me just see if there's any other questions. People were asking about the market. What is your question about the market? What is the market doing right now? I will tell you what I think, but I don't want you to be running around. Like if I say the market's higher, what are you going to go long today? I'll ask you what I, I'll tell you what I think about the market right now, but really that's not really relevant to what we're discussing right here today, but I will pull it up and give you my read in the market right now. Anyways, I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full and two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that have professional bearish gaps. The class is online. Again, it's August 24th and 25th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $64.99. You can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you want to sign up. You have to email me for the sign up forms. I'm running a back to school special through Saturday, Saturday, August 17th. So if you're here today, you're lucky you're gonna see this. If you sign up for the GAP class by Saturday, which is next weekend, you will get the GAP options course free. That is on September 29th. Now, if you just wanna sign up for the GAP options newsletter, that you can sign up for anytime. It's $59.99. You get all the trades for one year that are the options trades. This is just strictly options that get emailed to you. Okay. Again, email me if you want more information on that. And you get the GAP options course free with the back to school special. If you sign up for the newsletter by Saturday, again, the GAP options course is the 29th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then I'm doing a smaller version for people to get started. $29.99, you get the options letter free until 1031 and the gap options course, which is on the 29th. Again, this ends the 17th. So any questions besides someone asking about the market, um, email me at info at thestockswish.com if you would like a trial. Do I have time to pull up the market here? Looks like I have a couple minutes if I have 45 minutes. Do I have 45 minutes? Hold on. Do I have time? Uh, yes, you have about um, six minutes left. Okay, good. All right, let's look at this here today. So I want, theoretically, I mean, if you want, can everybody see my chart here quickly? Can you see my chart? Um, if you want to get technical, if you want to get really, really technical, okay, theoretically, you could say, well, we gapped up this morning, but I don't read it that way. I say this is neutral. But we closed last night at 182.76. I have the cues up, and we open at 183.11. If you want to be very, very technical, we gapped up. But to me, that's not how I would read this. This is a neutral open, so it's neutral. Neutral here in the cues. Now let's look at the, the diamonds. I don't really look at that as bullish. It's neutral to me. But let's look here at everything else. I'll tell you what to do today, nothing. If you're running in shorts, you can hang with them. If you got out of the shorts yesterday, fine. I wouldn't go long today, do nothing or wait till tomorrow. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't do anything today unless it's a specific stock. Um, we did gap up here in the diamonds, interesting. And we fell now, already broke the low from yesterday. So the low here was two, no, close was 255.08. We did gap up here 
Yeah, we did. We, we did gap up here in the diamonds and we're not going anywhere higher. So that's very interesting. So this did gap up. Q's was neutral. Uh, let's look at the SPY. But there's no play today in the market. If you're ready and puts fine, you shouldn't be in any longs in the market. That's for definite sure. Um, but I don't see any play here in the market today in the gap. Okay. Now let's look at the SPY. Again, if you were in shorts yesterday, you could get out of them, or if you're holding, just get a bigger move. But you got to make sure you know where you're going to exit these things. Spy. Yeah, we gapped up in the spy too, but you know the cues we were pretty much neutral. No read here in the market today. There's no playing here in the market today. You shouldn't go long the market. I wouldn't short it here either. So that's my take on it. What else do you want to know? No, I don't do anything with futures. I don't think you can make enough money doing that. Uh, I like trading gaps. I like options. You can make a lot of money doing options if you know what to do. Actually, I'll tell you right now, I caught a gorgeous, beautiful, fabulous put um, in Netflix this morning that went. I called the 295 puts just in the right time. Boom, fell. A beautiful call. And this worked. So this was for the options letter. Open, drop, fell. Boom. I mean, this was another nice call. Anyways, long story short, there's no play in the market today. I don't know if that answered the question. Somebody wanted to know what to do in the market. There's nothing to do in the market today. If you shorted the market yesterday and you didn't get out of your profits, you firmly believe that we're lower, which we very might, well might be. But there's no read here in the gap today. So I would wait until the gap tomorrow. Again, I don't know if we gap up or we gap down. And I can't rate the gap until we see it. So I'm not predicting the gap. I'm predicting what will happen after I see the gap, okay? After I see the gap. But I will say one thing here. Again, we got so close to the previous highs last Tuesday, or whatever it was, two days ago, three days ago. And at this point now, I mean, where, where do you think we're going? We either have to swing around and go right back up to the high and go over the highs, or we're lower. And the market's not going to go anywhere for days and weeks and months and years. So, I mean, expect the volatility to continue. You're going to have wild swings down. You're going to have wild swings up. The question is, are you going to know which one to do and when to play them? No one could have predicted Trump's tweet on Tuesday, nowhere, no how, no way. And it didn't happen in the gap. It happened in the live market day. And when stuff like that happens, I mean, how could you play it long? And I wouldn't have played it long anyways. Okay. So you have to see what's happening in the pre-market in the gap. And that is what I do, okay? But there's no institutional money coming back in here long. It's not happening today. I don't see it happening today even if we go green. And I don't even know that's gonna happen because look at the time here, it's 11.30. So, I mean, it's not like, it's, this is, you know, I mean, we're open trading here for only two hours. Did that answer everybody's questions? I got two more minutes. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, did I answer your question about the market? I have no idea who that person was. I kept asking about the market. Um, anyways, if you're interested in learning what I do, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you get up really early on Monday morning, you can watch me on Fox News on Fox and Friends first. I'll be talking about the economy and the market. Be very careful. Be very careful when you're trading in the next couple of weeks. And also on top of that, um, you know, don't, don't trade if you don't know what you're doing. I know everybody says it when they get on here, but the truth is you shouldn't. <laughs> you, know, you just shouldn't. And if you want to try out in the trading room, email me. I'll send it to you. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for having me.